We all know the story of a boy who was born, he was a mute, and they brought him to the Baal Shem Tev after his Bar Mitzvah, the Baal Shem Tev told him to say a bracha or something like that, and then the boy died. And it turned out that this boy was a Gilgal of, I forgot which big tzaddik, who did something wrong, he needed a tikkun, and in Shemaim he said, I don't, I don't want to go down, because I don't want to do Averis. So they made a deal with him that they'll make him a mute, and therefore, he can't do any Averis, and he'll just have to be misacking just that one thing that he did, and the Baal Shem Tov had him do the Tikkun, and that's why he died. That's the Maiz, so you can look it up in your stories of the Baal Shem Tov. Now, Libi, I am making this up totally. I have no right to say this. I just feel, when I hear about your son, and I hear about these kids who go through so much trauma and pain, and, and when you hear the story, it's off the charts, off the charts how much trauma and pain, and the kid goes off the derech and is in, 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 and the kid one day decides to put on tzitzis. It's so clear to me that this is a Gilgul, because we're all Gilgulim, of something somehow, somewhere that maybe one day he didn't put on tzitzis and he needed to put on tzitzis and he had to come down. Or maybe he was mazalzel in tzitzis or maybe he looked down at somebody else for not wearing tzitzis and they put him in this situation. We have kids, all of a sudden they put on tefillin. We have pictures of kids they put on tefillin without an undershirt. Rahman al you would if you didn't know how sick they were. But Hashem is rejoicing. They put on tefillin after six years. Without a yam, without a Hashem doesn't care. They put it, they, that's the beginning of coming back. They'll do tshuva for, for putting it on without an undershirt also one day. But that's the beginning. But maybe they came down here for that. We have kids who are struggling to keep Shabbos. We don't struggle to keep Shabbos. We have kids who, after breaking Shabbos, come back and they keep Shabbos. Sometimes they could be doing one mitzvah that is so precious to Hashem. Maybe that's the tikkun of why they were sent down here. Because how can, how can you be masakin for something that you didn't do properly? Maybe Hashem said, you go down to this crazy dar and you're going to get hurt and you're going to go off the derech and you're going to shave your hair and the other hair is going to be different colors and everyone's going to make fun of you and you're going to feel stupid and bad, you're going to be depressed, whatever. And then you're going to go ahead and do something. Maybe that's that, that thing that's going to be masakin for their gilgul. I'm totally making it up because I have no idea, but it's so it's so obvious to me that this is something higher on going on over here and that these are Haikh Nishamas. There's no question that Sadiqim say it said it already, that these are our greatest Nishamas and it, where it's a Gilgul and the end of time. But it's so pasha to me because they always do something. They always do something remarkable that we can't do. That we won't do. Because we'll always keep Shabbos. They'll somehow keep Friday night. They'll keep an hour. They'll light the candles. They'll do something that's so pushy that their lives were destroyed, like they went through a personal holocaust, and yet they emerged and they did did something. Must be that that's that's some kind of a tikkun for for what they had to do to come down here and why they had to go through the pain. Don't sue me if I'm wrong. It just really seems to me that that's what it is, and it must be a gilgal for the parents also that you 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 have to care for this neshama. Somehow you were given a neshama that, that's going through challenges, and it's clear that you have to tolerate the embarrassment and the difficulty. You put more time, money, and effort into this kid than raising 100 kids. And obviously, it's not a mistake. And we can bring them back, and we will bring them back, but you have to exhibit tremendous amount of rachum, chanon, erech hapayim, all yud gimel midis. Obviously, there's a, there's a reason why this, maybe in a previous Google, you threw this kid out. I don't know. Maybe you were a teacher and you said, get out. I don't, we don't know. What do we know? But we know that it has to make sense. And somehow you were given this neshama. It has to make sense for everybody. And, and your stories are remarkable. And you're certainly rising to the task of whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing here. Amida ben Asayin is unbelievable. And your success, Baruch Hashem. Mitz Hashem by all of you. Okay, let's get back. So you put on tzitzis. Wow.